My name is Vivek Bajaj. I'm responsible globally within IBM for our cognitive solutions business in banking and financial markets. Cybos has always been one of the most important events in the industry. It's almost become a meeting ground for anything and everything to do with banking. But this year is, partic is particularly interesting for IBM. Uh, our, our CEO is making a keynote address uh, tomorrow at 11.30 where she will be talking about some of the key investment areas for IBM. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about cognitive, we're going to be talking about blockchain, we're going to be talking about IBM efforts in security and payments, of course, payments being the cornerstone of Cybos. Um, the reason we're really uh, uh, talking about these themes in particular is because only in the last couple of years we've seen these themes come into their own as mainstream technology elements. So for instance, if you take cognitive, um, actually a cognitive project in and of itself, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, you shouldn't care about it. You should care about how you can apply that technology to really specific banking and financial services problems. And we're seeing significant results coming through in that space as well. Actually, we believe that uh, p when people say AI, they talk about artificial intelligence. We actually believe in augmented intelligence. What we mean is the idea is to really allow the relationship manager or the relationship advisor to release them to actually spend time on engaging in a human-like fashion with their clients and leveraging a cognitive engine to assist them, whether it's in doing corporate research or whether it's doing uh, other items like that. Um, the, the cognitive system is actually helping the person to be more personalized rather than taking away the personalization. It's adding the personalization uh, to the interaction. Whenever there's any disruptive technology, uh, there's always a little bit of, of fear of what is this what does this mean for me? Is it going to take away jobs, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. But actually, what you you see with emergence of any technology, whether it's even in manufacturing of cars, or uh, and from then on, then on onwards, you see that it actually allows human beings to work in more higher value added areas and leave kind of core manual activities to the, the machines to actually do that work. So if you take an instance, an area like regulatory compliance, a lot of banks have to invest thousands of people to actually just read the ever ending flow of new regulation, compare it with the bank's policies and say, oh, what do we need to do? With leveraging a cognitive system, the cognitive system has the ability to understand, reason, and learn. It can read that regulation almost instantaneously, determine the obligation, and ask the human regulator or the compliance officer to only audit the work of the cognitive engine, rather than having to read through millions of lines of text. Regulatory yeah. compliance is a massive area, right? Massive area of forced investment for banks. So for instance, in, in two, two spaces, one is indeed the complying with the regulation, as yeah. I just talked about, yeah. and the other part is they're being hit by massive fines when they are unable to comply. So a large French bank, which was in the news recently, uh, paid a fine of about $14 billion with a B, right? That's a lot of money in fines. And leveraging a cognitive engine allows you to check your readiness and your ability to pass stress tests, your ability to actually engage with clients. The other area is also in the area of surveillance insights, or I like the way I like to call it, catching bad guys, right? So in a trading environment, uh, you can leverage a cognitive engine to check for anomalies in trading patterns but also to check for anomalies in communication patterns. So for instance, does this communication sound like one of my employees or does it sound like someone completely different all of a sudden? Is in fact my, one of my employees accounts been compromised? So there too it helps you to really save costs significantly leveraging cognitive. Counter fraud is one of the, the, the massive areas of, uh, of issue, both in credit card payments and in non-credit card payments, right? And so what we see actually with fraud, that the problems is not only catching bad guys, but also allowing legitimate customers to execute their transactions more efficiently. So in fact, a lot of the transactions which get flagged as fraud are actually not fraud. They are often false positives. 
And this happens because banks still use old-fashioned rules-based systems. When you use a cognitive system to check for potential fraud, you look at patterns and changes in patterns, you become much more accurate in detecting that. Protecting your clients as well as protecting your own bank. What we're trying to, to make a point of is those, uh, those technologies are not out there in the future. They're here and now and being adopted. So for instance, we believe that cognitive computing in banking and financial markets by 2018 will be mainstream technology used across the enterprise, right? And several analysts have made, uh, made uh, similar assessments. IDC released a report recently where they had similar, uh, similar uh, thoughts as well. So if it's gonna be mainstream in 2018, you have a limited window of opportunity of about 15 months to really be first in and begin to get the significant advantages. When everyone is applying the technology, then the ability to differentiate becomes much more complicated. So that's the point we're really trying to make here.